Hello and welcome to Business Edition. In this program today, we have Eric Rekiza, who is the chairman of uh, Tanzania, Area Tanzania, which is an association of real estate agents in the country. Uh, it's a fairly new organization, but uh, I'm sure there's lots to talk about when we look at the real estate sector in the, in the country. So welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. For Before we talk about the actual sector itself, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what exactly do you do, I mean, apart from the association itself, but you yourself as a company, what do you do? I'm say, Eric Rakiza, I'm the founding CEO of Convenis. Um, Convenis is a, is a real, real estate platform to help people buy or find properties from land or homes. Um, online, not necessarily to make a decision to buy, but at least to get your interest raised and you want to see, you want to see the property. Right now, there's several uh, platforms like that, so you can't make a decision by looking on some of these um, platforms. In fact, some, in some cases, which I've experienced myself, you see a property, maybe there's one picture, nice picture, and then you call the person to take you there. It's totally different from just outside you. You tell the guy, no, I don't really want to go in. I know. I've, I've, I've come across that situation myself so many yes. times, yeah. You're shown a house. It looks great on a picture. And you go in there and see it physically, and it's like, what? Is this the same house? You know, yeah. Correct. I see what you mean, yeah. We want to change that. We want you to be well-informed before you go so, when, so that when you go there, you're just validating what you saw. As a result, save everybody's time. You don't want to go around seeing houses that you don't even care for. This association, why did you see the need to come up with something like this? We heard from a lot of people, even personal experiences, process of buying a house especially, to a lesser extent, renting, is not smooth. And um, we wanted to improve it. So the first thing we thought, the first step to improve it, we thought it would be to empower, inform, and educate the agents so that they know the process so they can help their consumers better. When you say um, you saw this need, um, are you saying that throughout the years that maybe uh, those who are involved in this sort of sector have been doing business but not in, by following the right procedures? What do you think, you know, what is your assessment, the way they, they were doing business? So yes, it was very informal and which is not, it's typical of most third world countries. Usually formalities come as countries develop so, for instance, I'll give an example. We didn't even have um, a real estate regulatory authority or body, anybody for that matter. And this is in the pipelines right now, as I've heard uh, Minister Lukuvi saying multiple times since, I think, 2016, that's the first time I heard about it. Mm -hmm. And the government has been working to establish this, and um, hopefully soon we'll see it. So you see structures coming as we are getting better economically, mm -hmm. and now we are media economy and you see these things, structures coming and we thought this is the right opportunity for us to establish such a thing. What do you think is so unique that's going to be different to what others are doing? We want to actually use most of those who are doing the services right now to train them to help smoothen the process because right now, for instance, if you want to buy a house, most of the agents, they'll help you to find, if you're, si if you're selling, they'll help you find a buyer, if you're buying, they'll help you, you know, find a seller. And then once you sign a, a contract, they're out of the picture, you get um, your commission, you're out as an agent. Now, technically you haven't bought a house because the house involves getting, once you get a title, that's when you have made the transfer. Now, because of, because of informalities, when you want to get a title, you actually have to go to the offices and a lot of times you find another agent there to help you because you don't know how you, the process, they will help you at a fee so you end up dealing with multiple agents on one transaction. We want to, we wish to eliminate that. Hopefully we'll get enough cooperation from, from the current existing agent. And of course, we're also targeting young unemployed and unemployed who want to, to be, because most of the agency is um, independent contractorship, so you don't really, you can really work for yourself, or some companies do hire agents. So we want you to be a trusted advisor as an agent we help a person from finding a property all the way to getting a title. Looking at um, the sector itself in Tanzania, it's been developing. Um, it's, it's, it's something that's quite new, but um, it's been growing. We've seen a lot of construction uh, of, uh, of properties going on. We're talking about um, uh, buildings for maybe offices, um, 
housing as well. There's been quite a lot um, over the past few years. So what does this tell us? You know, because we see a lot of buildings and there's an issue of pricing as well. People are not renting, people are not buying. So what does this tell us? I, I think there is um, a big demand for mid to low income housing that we have yet to see enough construction in that area. To, well, as, as we bring formality in, in the industry, we wish to help at least even advocate and, and provide more information, more solid data to, to the stakeholders to validate the demand because studies even by World Bank and other organizations, the government shows that yes, there is a demand, but we want to validate that so that people can actually put money in it and develop affordable housing for, for the majority. Why do you think houses are so expensive in, 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 in Tanzania? I think of two reasons. One, obviously the demand is higher than uh, the supply for at least the affordable housing. But two, I think how the prices were inflated in the past few years because few people can af could afford houses and they were buying and it was a price war and people and the price went up because a few could afford those few available houses. Mm. Now what would bring it down that will take a corporate, you know, it, it's a cooperation of a lot of stakeholders from the government, the, you know, lending organizations and um, even technology. And I will talk more about technology. Technology now we've seen can print a house nowadays and it's a very new technology. And um, it's been tested in the US. A house was printed, they say by uh, the cost of the house was $4,000. Printer is not public yet, they're not selling it but the house is there to be seen. Even if it was $10,000, if you take a mortgage for $10,000, many people can afford that, you know, because it will be for five, 10 years. Many people can afford that. How do you think we can do that? What, what is it? Um, is it the, um, those involved in the uh, construction sector to see that there's a need to change in the use of technology when it comes to materials being used as well? Um, who can lead the way to make sure that we, we change and we make more affordable housing? I think first of all, education, we need to educate the people to say, yes, this, these houses are good, they're durable. In fact, some of them, many of them are fireproof too. The main, um, the leading developers like the National Housing then, NSSF, they have deep pockets to, to build the houses to, so they can, if they build those houses and these houses are, you know, they'll sell them at affordable uh, prices. I know affordable is, I don't, I don't like to use the term affordable because affordable for CEO, or CEOs is different from affordable from teachers, you know. Mm -hmm. They will be able to make houses that are reasonably priced that most people can afford. If they don't, because to have a, an impact, they have to build a big community with those houses. And I think people will buy because what are the options? One of the things that I hear people, uh, we have a culture of building our homes, not buying homes. And, but then even that, I think it will change naturally because now people are driving two to three hours to come to work daily. They cannot go farther. You know, it'll reach a point, it'll be like, okay, this is nonsense. I cannot, it doesn't make sense to drive four hours to work. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon I think we'll change to a culture like America or maybe Europe where you, people will start buying because it will make economic sense to buy in the city than to build four hours away. When we're looking at um the issue of affordability, um, not so many people can afford to construct houses. And uh, one way out of this is, is to the, uh, the mortgage uh, services. Is this the way to go right now, do you think, that, uh, to make sure that um, Tanzanians are able to own houses, or do you think that uh, there are other ways to be able to go around that? I think um, you really can't avoid mortgage altogether if you want mass, most people to own homes, because you can cross the globe, Houses are the single most expensive things that, or that most people buy in their lifetime. You know, so if it's too expensive, then it makes sense to get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we're not used to the culture of lending or you know borrowing money, but um, I think also it has to do with education to teach people this is not a bad thing. I mean, if you plan accordingly, you can actually get a house that you, that's safe, that's better, that's that you wish to. Um, not necessarily a dream house, but the house that's uh, sufficient, you know, to, for you to live comfortable and safe, safely. So I think it's more of education. But yes, mortgage is, is the way to go because, yes, you say it's very, very small actually in Tanzania. The mortgage size, just to give you a comparison, the size of the mortgage 
ratio uh, to, to the mortgage ratio to GDP in Tanzania is less than one percent at um, less than under two hundred million dollars the entire side of the mortgage. It's very small. While in Kenya it's about two point five percent, about two point five billion dollars I think um, of the GDP. Now if you look at the Western world, it's almost like almost no exception over fifty percent. Like in Canada is the mortgage share is equivalent to the, really to the GDP. It's about 100% of the GDP size. In the US, it was about 67% a couple of years ago. I'm not sure about now. So yes, it's very, very small, and many people are not really exposed to mortgage, mortgages yet. And that we have to educate. I think stakeholders in the industry, mostly banks, we have to educate the people to, to get mortgages because it's, it's good. And, and maybe... But maybe it's the banks themselves as well, you know, because... Uh, it could be that people are not, not so well aware of uh, what these services can offer. But um, what about the banks themselves? You know, the number of banks that can provide these services as well, that could be also an issue. Yes, actually, uh, uh, that, the banks also are part of uh, not the problem. I think they haven't been proactive enough in, in, in this area because mortgage industry is big. Like, if you look at most major banks in the world, or at least in America, like the Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, um, Wells Fargo, they have a subsidiary that does mortgage. Like, it's, it's its own bank within a bank just that, that just does mortgages. We don't have that here. It's just a small department. So if you want to grow to that magnitude, you have to have enough. You have to commit to that level, have a, a unit that does that. So we're not there yet. But once we get there, there I think it will, they will, because they will invest enough to have a subsidiary, so they will have to invest more to to promote the industry, to, to bring you know, people to come and take the mortgages. You know. What sort of environment is conducive for you know, a bank to provide mortgage services? Because when we look at Tanzania, is the environment conducive? Before, obviously, there was, we didn't even have IDs. So, I mean, how do you lend to people who, who can't even, you can't even identify them? Now, that's a, process, that's a step in the right direction. Now, um, as the, comp the economy grows, we get will be a bit stable for banks to because also if you're lending people for ten years and the economy is not doing well and the currency keep you know depreciating, you may not get your return. You know at the end of the day they'll be paying what's not worth what what you lend them. So with it, it's a combination of things. So as the economy grows and currency gets more stable, I think banks I think we'll see banks getting in that area. Uh, more now, we already have some credit bureaus that are coming. Uh, that have already actually, I think there's a couple that started not to maybe the past couple of years. So we'll see. I suspect we'll see more mortgage uh, business in the next few years um, in the local banks. What What is needed? Um, for example, if I wanted to get a mortgage, what um, What qualifies me to get a mortgage? The banks have to do first of all to see to to check your credit. Now that's new, which means um, are you, your you honesty have to have and integrity. Maybe. <laughs> so that's income. The ability of income, yes. Income is one of the factors, but credit is the character, your character, maybe are you honest, you know, your personal integrity, like to, do you pay you know, your obligations, do you handle your obligations um, accordingly? And then do you have enough income to pay the loans? Cause, and the loans have to be, now once, and that's why I said it, it's a combination of things. But once they have established, once the houses are affordable, say, and then because typically you shouldn't pay housing, the housing costs shouldn't exceed 30% of your monthly income. So that's almost like a global standard. Many banks know this. In fact, uh, as I mentioned earlier, at this, uh, this event, um, some CEO of, uh, of this government agency said, quoted the same number. 30% of, of um, mortgage industry of uh, of income shouldn't your rent or mortgage shouldn't exceed 30%. So once they know that, and they know the population, the average income, and they can price it accordingly to where people can afford it. So income is one thing, but also you have to have down payment assets. You know enough. Do you have money to put down? Because uh, we can't just give you a house by just 100% of loan. You have to commit at least something. You know, say hey, I'm putting in good faith you know, deposit here to say, I want this and I'm ready to put in some money. So people have to save money to, to which is also a discipline if you can save enough to put it down payment of say 
So it's a combination of things, and that's what banks do, when, and that's what I did for years as a mortgage underwriter, where you assess borrowers' credit, income, you know, the property itself, the value of the property, and um, to determine the borrower can afford to repay the loan. What happens? Uh, it happens that maybe it's an accident or, you know, you, you become unemployed or a death happens, you know. Uh, you know, these kind of issues, I think people are scared because when you look at these th things, you're like, okay, I can take a mortgage, but what happens if I'm not able to pay back in time? Um, will my family uh, be obligated to pay back the, that, that, that mortgage? Uh, will they become slaves to pay back that mortgage? So maybe um, trying to, 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 uh, to educate people, to tell people like, okay, fine, the mortgages are here, uh, the opportunities are there, um, you must be prepared to do this and that. Uh, they're not bad, but also we have to know what are the, the negative sides of mortgages as well. We didn't have a culture of getting mortgages, and we've still, obviously by the numbers, we still don't have that culture. But um, I think um, if you look at the benefits and the cost, it's worth it because, yes, you're getting a mortgage that you have to pay for, say, 10 years, but in those 10 years we're living in a better home. So would you rather, what would you rather do? I think at the end of the day you have to educate the people what they're getting, the benefit versus the cost. Because yes, things happen in life, you can lose a job. I mean, there are financial products to cover some such things, like for instance, insurance to cover in case of your, your lender's death to cover that. But um, even without that, I think more, more so it's a matter of education to let the people know it's a good thing. Because there's one study that showed in, in Tanzania, majority, I think 90, I can't remember, I think it was 98%, it's significantly high, or 99% of people actually b build their homes. And it takes roughly 10 years to build those homes. So this is, it's money tied in those houses for 10 years. It's more, according to the study, I think it's, it was 22 trillion shillings. It's more money, there's more money tied in unfinished homes than there is money in all banks combined. Now, imagine how much, if the banks could loan this you know, money to people to buy, build quickly, say in a year you're in, this amount of money that's sitting idle for 10 years, that could really make a big difference. I mean, 22 trillion is a lot of money. The target people, we're looking at um, those in the businesses, or we're looking at uh, in informal employment, who do you think uh, that, you know, really will benefit from such services? So right now I think the banks are focused on employed because, because of the system also it's, it's been very unstructured. So now the, the employed people, are, at least you know they work there, you know, they have steady income. So those are, at least in current system, those, it's much easier to get a loan if you're employed. For unemployed, we're not there yet. Uh, as a country. However, there are programs. I, I think there's a company that's working on a program where you, you rent a property, their property, after like t five years, if you're good, basically you establish your, your credit within those five years. If you're good, the five year worth of payments that you made becomes a down payment, and then they lend you, a bank lends you money for the remaining, say, 10 years. So that will be based on your performance in their five years. It doesn't matter whether you're self-employed or employed because you may be self-employed and um, as long as you're making payments, that means at least you're making money somehow, you know, somewhere, even though not in formal em employment. But currently, I think that banks, most banks are targeting the employed only, which is a very small fraction. Uh, we're looking at um, the um, real estate sector in the country and the uh, developments that are going on there, and you being a stakeholder in that area as well. Um, for someone who's um, venturing into this kind of area, what have you seen as the opportunities right now in Tanzania? I would say the biggest opportunity, again, is affordable housing, because, again, statistics shows 80% of the population cannot afford a house that costs more than 25 million T shillings. Now, in fact, if you even add um, 10 million to 35, to 35 million, I think that goes to like 90%, um, 90% if 85, 90%, I can't remember exactly. So a lot of people can't afford homes. And um, 
home ownership is important um, component of poverty eradication. So, so it's it, it, it's it's big. It's a big market, and obviously with homes, there is a lot that supports. It's one of the it, real estate is one of the industry, uh, one sector that that involves a lot of other sectors because apart from building homes, yes, you use cement and maybe other material. Filling the house is almost includes almost every other industry, you know, buying refrigerators, whatever, electric lightning and um, water, like everything really is involved. So healthy real estate sector is good for the economy. And uh, the challenges that you see that you'd like to be addressed, what you stands out? The challenges, yes, um, you hear people complain the interests are high, and um, mm. I think it's time now that they, we're getting, as the country stabilizes more, the risk, I think, of fluctuation will, re, will be minimized. So I think the banks will have to, I'm not sure if they will lower the rates because it's it's been they a want call to. for everyone to bring down those rates, bring down those rates. Yes, but I'm sure they'll hear us eventually. <laughs> most, most banks, I mean, if you're making money, you don't want to reduce making money unless... It's, it's, I'm not necessarily a fan of regu you know, regulations, but sometimes they're important, you know, because just to be off the topic a little bit, you see China and US, um, China's been regulating the market for so long, America has been very open, but now America is fighting China is playing almost like tit for tat regulate regulations, and by no means I support everything that America does. But the aspect of regulation is um, is important to 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 help some sectors. So, so I think for for in my opinion for 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 the real estate market here, the stakeholders need to sit down and say, okay, what's reasonable? Do, is it, uh, should we charge 22%, for instance, over 10 years? Is it will it really will it, um, erode the profit or the, the principle over 10 years? I mean, given, studying, given all the scenarios, studying everything, and maybe they'll come to, maybe they can talk and agree on lowering or at least stabilizing, you know, stabilizing the rates for a while. I think it was more, they got it, it was more, banks fought against it. However, there are other programs. It doesn't necessarily have to be the government. The, the World Bank, actually, Kenya committed to give low income loans. I think it's 7%, 7.5%, if I remember correctly. And they got, I think, I know they, were, they got $250 million from the World Bank to support low affordable homes, you know, and under that program. So maybe we can look into such partnership. Maybe this yes, bank can lend high, for much higher interest to other people, but we have something like uh, Tanzania Mortgage Refinance Company and um, other TIB or I don't know government agency to look into establishing partnership with such organization like World Bank IFC to see okay can we get something similar to that because that's 250 million dollars a lot of money to it'll, a lot it'll, and that that's for houses I think that are less than fifty thousand dollars so that a lot of homes will be financed in Kenya for that program so we need something like that at least to lift a lot of people out of, to get on home ownership, you know. Where do you see this sector maybe in the next um, five years? What, what picture comes to your head? Land is one of the scarcest commodities in this world. We have this, it never increases. Well, I guess you can do run, land reclamation, but population grows fast. In fact, with urbanization in countries like Africa, like many countries in Africa, Dar es Salaam, cities like Dar es Salaam, Nairobi, there's high rate of urbanization, so the demand will only grow and it will grow fast because our cities are growing so fast because of population growth and urbanization. So the demand will grow. So because of that reason, even if everything else stays the same, I think things will be good. Now if other things play like banks uh, put more effort in developing their industry, the government you know, does their part and I think things will be, can be even much better. But even if things remain as they are now, just the population growth and urbanization is enough to, to make this business lucrative. It was nice talking to you, Eric, and uh, with that, we've come to the end uh, of our program. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks. Uh, we're talking to Eric Rekiza, who's the chairman of uh, Association of Real Estate Agents in Tanzania. My name is Yvonne. I'm saying goodbye. Until next week, same time, from Business Edition.